All right, now we're going live. Mm -hmm. We're not live. Everybody mute their phones real quick for me and then uh, we'll unmute once I talk to you guys. All right, I believe that we can win. <laughs> I, I mean to say, I believe that we are live. What's going on, everybody? It's your girl Tendai, the hair whisperer, and we are here with another exciting edition of Texture Talk Live. So for those of you who are new to Texture Talk Live, uh, what this is is a platform where we discuss hair, we discuss life, we discuss so many things that are related to the fiber of who we are. Our hair represents that fiber. And, uh, you know, we plant little seeds around in our brains and we also water them. So if you don't have your water, get your water because we're going to water our planted seeds and our fiber and our hair, make sure we're hydrated from the inside out and all of that grand, grand stuff. We have some beautiful, amazing people joining me on here. We have Michelle Robinson. We have Elizabeth Danielle. We have Stee Stone. I call her Stee Stone, but it's a Stisha Stone. And Kanaya Slusher, Major Slusher, on with us today. This is going to be an amazing, amazing show, you guys. So be sure you share this video. I'm actually going to um, go on my phone just so I can keep up with the comments and all of the good stuff as you guys are talking to me. So I wanna make sure I'm, I'm talking to you all while you're talking to us. And if you have questions for any of our uh, panelists on today, let us know if you have questions for me, let me know as well. And uh, yeah, so, so what's this all about? Today's Texture Talk is about inspiration. Inspiration. You know, in a time like this, the worst thing we could do is to not put out positive vibes. That's the worst thing you could possibly do. You, you really have to watch what you're saying, watch what you're doing in negative ways, watch your company. You have to really, really kind of protect your positive vibes. So what I did was I reached out to some people who are not only keeping positive vibes going, but they're also business women during the pandemic. Okay, I'm a businesswoman, so I can totally relate, but I wanted to get these women on a panel and talk to them about the highs of business, the lows of business, the struggles, all of that good stuff. Um, I'm going to have them unmute themselves in just a minute, but I want to send a special shout out to everybody that's tuning in right now to Texture Talk Live. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Danny Nicole, thank you so much. She's like, yes, with the purple hearts. Yes. Faye Contembo, hello, queen. She's tuning in from Canada. What's going on, lady? Uh, we have Jasmine Price. Hey, baby girl. Rachel Glass for Young and Danny Nicole are watching. Thank you so much for watching. They're saying hashtag black girl magic. Hey, <laughs> that's right. We are business women check us out everybody's looking good faces are big but wait till i introduce these phenomenal women to you guys you will be amazed amazed and um, not only that i want you guys to be introduced to some new products some new um avenues of connection and networking and things like that so that's what all of this is about okay so uh first of all everybody unmute yourselves everybody unmute yourselves because we gotta get it in Hello, hello. What's going on? Hey, hey. Hey. Yeah, we've got people tuning in, guys. This is going to be an amazing show. Make sure you guys share this video. Minetta McDaniels, thank you so much for watching as well. Um, I hope you got your water. If you don't have your water, y'all going to toast up with some pretend water. But next time, we'll bring our water. Just to water our thoughts and our seeds, okay? All right. Our slogan here is, my natural is my natural. Okay, so what that means is that what's growing, your fibers, they're all good. Whatever you got going on, if you decide to straighten it, whatever you decide to do, your natural is your natural. So on the count of three, I'm going to have you guys say, my natural is my natural. I know this is on a delay, so we're going to do the best we can to be together. But if not, y'all get the picture. Y'all get the idea, right? <laughs> okay, on the count of three, one, two, three, 
My natural my is natural. My natural is my natural. <laughs> y'all feel that man? Y'all look so good. Y'all look good. Michelle, how are you doing today? I am awesome. Thanks for having me. Good. Stisha, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm excited for this. Awesome. Elizabeth Danielle, how are you today? Blessed, blessed, blessed. All is well. Awesome. Awesome. Miss Major Slusher, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm so glad that you came onto the show. Um, you know, everybody's just so excited. My natural is my natural black girl magic. So, you know, let's get right into this whole thing. You guys are business women among many, right? But we have uh, some of the best, some beast modes out here with some promising, promising futures. I just want to go through and just actually let you guys Say really briefly your name, the name of your company, and what you promote or what your business is. Okay, so let's start. Let's just start with. Um, we're going to start with Kanaya first, because yes. let me tell y'all something. First of all, <laughs> this little lady right here. She actually, I look at her like a little sister, honestly, like like either on my daughter or something like that. She gets on my head. I promise you, <laughs> she really does. She gets on my head about stuff, and I think I well. <laughs> I move, but it's the difference when you have somebody that can actually motivate you. Um, mm -hmm. Kanaya, first of all, is 19. Kanaya, I think I met you when you were, what, 18 or 17, something like that? I don't know. Yeah. Something like that. We met. She, she walked up to me with this big old bright smile, and she was like, hey, and I do this. Blah, 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 blah. She was telling me all these different things. And I was just like, okay. Meanwhile, we hung out from there, and um, it's been pretty cool, but She's 19, guys, and I want you guys to really tune into this energy from this girl because this young lady, this, this young lady, and uh, go ahead, take it away. Well, I'm Kanaya, also known as Major Slusher. Um, I own Major Beauty House, which is a brown and lash brand in which I started independently at the age of 16, and which is now a beauty salon that I don't have to do every day anymore by myself. I now have a team of girls that can take my clients for me, which is truly, truly a blessing that I have been working for for years independently, and it feels so great to now have a team. Shout out to Elizabeth and Danielle. But um, yeah, that is amazing. Also, I am the owner of Veromel, which is my clothing brand that I've had since I was 13. And that kind of like started me off and showed me and what I would say prepared me for where I am now. Um, just the life of business, just being so young and doing every fundraiser possible, every marketing skill possible to fund my fashion events and just attending network seminars, renting out spaces for uh, model classes and having models that were like twice my age. So that is definitely a time period that I love to look back on that I have a lot of, a lot of networks from. And lastly, I own a youth workshop by the name of Design Me a Donut, which is basically a subliminal message. Um, during the workshop, they design donuts. It's for girls and women um, to motivate them on their own path to success. So the plain glazed donut is themselves now, and the toppings are the resources that I'm installing in them to become the best version of themselves. So that has been um, pretty successful. It was really kicking off before um, Corona, and I had did uh, a workshop at Jury Elementary, if anyone's familiar with that, and it was very, very nice. It's just amazing to motivate and just make a little girl feel like she can be anything she want to be. Um, so yeah, that is me, and that's what I do. Right, and she inspires. Boom. Yes. See, that's what this is all about. It's about people who inspire. She's mentioned three things yes. in a matter of two seconds. And <laughs> but you know what? This is the thing. This is what I love about that, Kanaya. As, as we get older, we start to feel like we have to lock in on one thing. You know, yeah. I feel like, okay, I can't do all these different things. You know, I'm going to tell you, back when I was your age, I was doing, I was, I was a singer, songwriter, producer. I was doing, Told me that. I was doing, I was doing a million things, right? And at a point I started feeling weird. I felt like an oddball oh. because um, I was like, why should, why do I need to do, well, you know, people kept saying to me, you need to pick something and stop focusing on everything. Well, I don't know. You gave me a, a new, you inspired me. You gave me a new renewed vision of you can do all these things because that's who you are. You can. But what I would say is you have to be a master at one first. See, I mastered fashion. It wasn't until I built connections so hard in my community to where I was able to start something new. 
to where I was already known for what I was doing. You know, um, not saying that I, w- I wasn't global yet, but that's where I'm working towards now. But it prepared me for my next level. So I always tell people, don't juggle a whole bunch of things at one until you master it. One, then you go to the next. So you can do as many as you want, but you cannot have a whole bunch of trades and not be a master of none. So yeah, I right. do agree. And I'm glad I inspire you. You are doing great with all everything that you do. And so, yeah, that's what I would like to add to that. Right on, right on. We're going to come back to the nice one. They're like, love it. People are here like, love it. See, that's what this show is about. It's about inspiring. We're going to go right above you right there next to you. Well, let me see. Yeah, right above you in the center. Um, to Elizabeth Danielle. You might as well go on and mute yourself. We're going to keep on moving. Elizabeth Danielle actually is, let me tell y'all this. Okay, this is another person I met just out doing my thing. She's one of those people that kind of slides up on you and next thing you know, they're around and all of a sudden you've got all these dope things happening around you. you like, <laughs> you know what I'm She's like a silent storm, but for real, really, really inspiring, inspiring. Um, her story is amazing. Don, go ahead and tell them a little bit about your business and then we're going to really dig into it. I want to make sure I introduce all of you guys. Okay. I am Elizabeth Danielle, PR and marketing. I am considered the plug and the outlet. That's right. <laughs> One thing about me, I always kind of stay in the background. I don't talk too much. My work shows for I my work shows for what I do. But um one thing with Elizabeth with uh Elizabeth Danielle, the brand, it's all things PR, all things marketing, my uh Focus client is more of the nonprofit, small businesses, and entrepreneurs. Uh, one thing with uh, myself, I believe I was a no, I was a brand before I realized that I was a brand. Mm-hmm. One thing with me, I'm very uh, passionate for the people, building relationships, making connections, and one thing with myself and the brand that I represent. I love to see my clients' growth. I love to see that the passion that I have, you know, shine through what I do for my clients. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I would say I've been a client before you were taking clients. <laughs> you were just kind of like around. I'm like, well, we work together. That's just what we do, you know. But right. I'm so very, very proud of what you're doing, your strides. And we're going to talk about more of your journey and how you got to where you are, because it's not a smooth transition. People see this part and they think that, oh my gosh, she's so dope. She's doing all these things, but you guys have no idea what Mm -hmm. people have been through. So we're going to definitely share your story as well. Let's move right along to the Stisha Stone. Stisha Stone, you have to correct me on the pronunciation because I'm used to saying Stee Stone. You know, and I'm black, I'm black girl magic. So, you yeah. know, I, I make up some words and I'll be station. <laughs> so, how do you pronounce your name? Estacia. Estacia. Yeah, four syllables. I'm station. <laughs> that is so wrong. Estacia. Estacia. Does that have a meaning? Beautiful queen. Right on. Come on, beautiful queen. Now, let's uh, go ahead and, first of all, you, I met Estesia at an event that she was putting on, and it, it was pretty much uh, to inspire and promote businesses. So we were there, but what caught my attention is that this lady has written so many books and helped so many people to write books. And I want you to speak about your business. Tell everybody what you do. Um. So I am Stee Stone. Most people know me as author stone but I am so much more than an author I have um today is actually my third anniversary for my first book so it has come full circle and I am I consider myself a life strategist and a writer so what I do I empower girls and women to ensure success in their lives and career paths so how they do that is by applying the tools and the tools are written through my book. So that's they have an actual manual and a resource to take along on their journey instead of telling them, oh, you can do this, you can dream big, you can do all of these great things. But some people don't know how to get there. So I consider myself that guide, the life strategies to help them actually get to their purpose and their why on their journey. 
yes, I am a writer. I love sharing stories. I love telling stories. And um, I do, I have four books. Um, also, the, the fair, the event that you mentioned is through my Girl Circle Youth Development Corporation, and it's a resource hub for girls. And Michelle was there too, it's and I. And I had a lot of different community organizations that serve girl programming and services. And um, I had girl entrepreneurs and women entrepreneurs. And that day is like a huge event, bringing women together, bringing girls together, bringing families to provide those direct connections to what's happening in that community for girls and women. So that's what I do, empower girls and women. Yes, she does. And um, I mean, this is another silent force. Like you, you will look at her if you meet her and you should be so laid back and cool. But when you go to her and you talk to her, you know, about writing a book or anything like that, she comes with it like a total whoop and, and zeroes in on you and really helps you to get yourself together. So I definitely appreciate that. We're going to talk more to you. And hey, anyone out there, if you guys have questions, Esthesia, what is the name of the book that is your anniversary, your anniversary book? What's the name of that book? Um, 12 Stones Tools for a Young Woman's Journey. 12 Stones Tools for Young Women's Journey. Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, I actually had a chance to check out the cover. So we're going to share information on how to get your book and all of that. Um, next up, but last but not least at all, <laughs> Michelle Robinson. Michelle Robinson, another young lady that I've had the pleasure of vending with at many, many events, many shows. Um, I, I'm a user of her products as well. Um, I want you guys to know her. I want you to purchase from her. I want you guys to purchase from everybody on here, but especially this young woman too, because um, I know her products work. I know how hard she works behind the scenes. And I definitely want you guys to know and be able to purchase this product from a young woman, Black Girl Magic. Here we go. Michelle Robinson, tell them what you do. Hey, so I'm Michelle. I am the owner of Demi Blue Natural Nails and the creator of the Demi Blue Vegan Friendly Nail Polish Collection. Absolutely. Yeah, I started the, the collection after my mom's experience with breast cancer. Um, having a background in healthcare and education, I actually um, worked in uh, healthcare for over um, 12 years and in education for eight years. So I hired and managed nurses and taught nurses. And then I went to the collegiate level and um, trained students and I hired um, across the Midwest. I oversaw 22 campuses. And when my mom um, experienced cancer and radiation, I used my healthcare um, and health education experience to create a healthier alternative for uh, something that we use every day, nail polish. And uh, the beauty industry has warned us about harsh toxins that are found in many of our cosmetics yet. Um, nail polish has not been talked about as, as much as other things. And there's not a lot of products um, from the nail polish capacity that is made um, to have less toxins and less cancer fueling chemicals. Um, and because I know how that impacts the body, it was crucial that I created a product, not just for my mom, but for other women, especially women who were undergoing radiation treatments, who want to, to still look pretty and feel pretty, but did not have healthier products. And so that's how Demi Blue was born. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. Um, from the time that we met, I've been, you know, using it on my cuticle oils, the polish, all of that stuff. I've been using it. And she has amazing colors, guys. It's not just, oh, I've got this nail polish line, just a bunch of ugly colors. No, this woman <laughs> is passionate about it. She's got some beautiful colors. And we have people on here that are definitely um, sending their praises about your products, too. So they're they're really supporting you as well. Thank uh, you. Got to order me some polish real soon. Demi Blue is so dope. So, yeah. yeah. Who, have you guys tried her polish at all? Any one of you guys? I know I have. Mm -hmm. Not yet. Y'all gotta get with it. Yes, she's actually located in Lux. Inside of Lux, yeah. I specialize in natural manicuring uh, services because of course a lot of the um, harsh toxins that we use in conventional 
practices um, we try and stay away from. So I am providing natural manicuring services, um, pedicure services, CBD, manis and pedis inside of Lux 1215 Washington. Come see me. Right. <laughs> okay. okay. Right on. Hey, I want to, um, we have some questions that uh, are coming in from different ones, but I also want to pull some of these to you guys. Kanai, this first question is going to go to you. What inspired you to create Major Beauty House? <laughs> Um, so I had a, a big passion for brows because I just hated the way my brows grow. Um, and so after like trying to do family members and things like that, after a couple years, it started getting good. So, you know, I was working at McDonald's, it was my first job and I hated it. It was absolutely horrible. Um, and my family would just tell me, you know, you should, well, not my family. I had a cousin that I was living with and she told me, you should do this because she had just graduated esthetician school. And she was like, you should just do brows for full time. And I had a few friends that I was doing um, in my free time and they were saying the same exact thing. And, you know, I wanted bigger fashion events. I wanted bigger fashion shows, but they were really, really expensive. And so, you know, the money I was making just wasn't enough. And due to, no matter what I was going through, my main goal was I knew my business was going to take me out of my situation. So, you know, it just, I, I honestly, it feel, I feel like it happened overnight. I did my brow shoot and I got so many positive reviews, more than I even knew. And so everybody was just like, you need to do this. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. So I quit my job and I never looked back. And that was the last job I ever had. So it was definitely a blessing. Um, but I had to build my clientele from the ground up. I didn't have anybody that gave me clients or, you know, anything like that. So it was hard at first being young and doing it and people just being very, very good at it because I started so early. You know, older women were like, you're the one doing my brows? And I'm like, yeah. And you know, some people would walk up and some people would stay. So now I'm at a point to where I have that solid foundation where people know that my work is at the caliber that it is at the age that I am. So it's no trouble, but you have to get through that process. So I would say, you know, starting Major Beauty House was well for me and that was what inspired me to do so. Very, very good. Very nice. That's a, that's actually a good question for everybody. What inspired you? I know, Michelle, you told me that you said that um, your mother going through breast cancer, that's what inspired you to start the, the, nat the natural nail line, right? Absolutely. Um, research shows that one in eight women um, in the U.S. will develop breast cancer. And um, a lot of the beauty cosmetics that we use contain chemicals that are linked to cancers mm -hmm. and because we the number one you know contributors to the beauty industry i thought it was important to at least eliminate a, a bit of that risk through the nail polish. right just stepping out and um starting to figure out what's going to be best that's amazing um let me just ask the both of you guys astitia what astitia sorry what um what inspired you to start your business uh, what inspired me to start writing? First, my daughter, because um, that was my first big writing. I never wanted anything to happen to me and she'd be lost because from my decade working in nonprofit across many different fields, there are, I, I met so many men, women, youth, boys, girls who are just lost and hopeless and misguided and my daughter was one years old and I said, I always, she was just happy and smiling and jumping up. You know how toddlers bounce around dancing. I said, I never want her to lose this moment of happiness. I always want her to be guided, be hopeful. Have. I think you froze. She froze like a, <laughs> I don't know what happened. We'll come back to um, Astitia. I'm not sure what happened with her, her, her setting there, but we'll come back to her. Um, Danielle, let's ask you the same question. What inspired you? Cause I know you, we kind of talked a little bit about some things and I've seen you come through some things. I don't know everything, but I do know what I've seen in a short amount of time. So, Go ahead. Asisha, we'll come back to you. Your, your screen kind of froze, but we'll definitely come back to you. Okay. What inspired me? What inspired Danielle to start Elizabeth Danielle, the brand? I believe that, honestly, it was me being on social media. 
um, the job that I was working at, I had access, I had access to be on social media and I was on social media quite a bit. Um, over time, uh, there was something a few years back called Angie's List where everyone would um, go on Angie's List to find this and find that. I pretty much was Angie's List. Like everyone was contacting me to, where do I get this? Where do I find this? Where should I go for this? And so I just used my connections and network and building relationships. I'm like, you know what, let me do something with this. So just making the connections and, you know, a lot of people in the community, St. Louis and surrounding areas really trust me. If anything has to do with Elizabeth Danielle and I'm uh, branding it, promoting it, they know that it's, right. they know it's top notch because I'm not like off the record and excuse my language, they know that I don't promote BS, period. So right. Right. a lot of people trust me. So that's honestly just my, um, my passion for helping people, making connections and building relationships, capturing special moments with live experiences and my phone and camera and all of that. So mm -hmm. that's definitely true. I, I think I've told you that a few times, you know what, I actually trust you with the stuff because you know it's hard when you have a, your own business that's your baby and yeah. you don't want to put that in anybody's hands so you're just kind of like okay 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 she can handle it you know yeah you definitely care about that and Cecia, i didn't want to skip skip over you i know we were talking about your inspiration did you want to finish up the uh, tail end of what you were saying oh yeah i just didn't want my daughter to be left behind i wanted her to have a guide and one book wasn't enough. And then as I continued my career, I just saw the need for women development, women personal growth and girls personal growth and development. So I just wanted to fill that gap so people won't be lost and left behind and be able to push forward and beyond their limitations. Cause that's what dreaming bigger is. Just pushing beyond who you was supposed to be or defined as. Yeah, I, I know that all too well, you know, um... I, I, I assume that people know who I am when they come to Texture Talk, but I, I can't assume that. So, I mean, we all have a story, right? So um, I started at 12 as a barber with my dad. So I was cutting hair in the shop and doing all these different things. But over the years, I know for me, um, what drove me, because I hear this a lot, and let me back up. I hear a lot, how did you get past the fear of starting your own business? Um, my my say was always I would just work through the fear. Like I, I did it afraid. I you know really, and I guess you know I, I just learned that fear was a part of that journey. So it's not a stumbling block or something that stops. It's just that's just territory, and you just gotta be like, okay, then you're then you're over it. You keep on moving yeah. forward. What drives you guys? How do you deal with fears? I think that's a, a major question that a lot of people will um, have for you. How do you deal with fear? I don't know who wants to take that. Um, I'll go. Fear, so that's a limitation. And I always tell people, I empower women and girls to dream bigger, dreaming beyond your limitations. Fear is one of the biggest limitations that hold people back from going after everything they want to go after and become. So fear for me is, I'm fearful of stuff still. Yeah. And there's things that I haven't accomplished, like speaking in front of thousands of people. I'm going to be scared just because that's just what your body does. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's what the enemy try to does, do to you. So I just keep going. Like, even if it's, I love the challenge, too. So even if it's something in my soul that's a little nervous or anxious or whatever the case may be, because that's all fear is. You just got to push through because it's something on the other side. Absolutely. I'm more afraid of not accomplishing my goals than I am more afraid of. Uh, I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid of not accomplishing my goals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, anybody else want to chime in on that? I think I will. Um, for me, I was fearful um, because the beauty industry is totally new to me. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that um, I would get a lot of pushback on especially from close friends. How are you going to be a manicurist? How are you going to tell someone about 
cosmetics and the beauty industry when all you know is healthcare, when all you've done was educate, you know. And um, originally I was fearful to enter in, into the industry without having, you know, 10, 15 years as some people um, would. And I just, you know, through educating people and building, you know, trust is how I was able to, I feel like, dominate the nail polish industry in the Midwest. Um, you know, nail polish and, and, and convincing people, <laughs> right? And educating and getting that buy-in and allowing people to be a part of the process. Yeah. You know, I, I can't even imagine you doing anything else. So that that's the funny thing. Like I see you with the nail pop and that's that's what I see until you show me something else. That's what I see. <laughs> and I, I got a question for you because um, I, I want to pose that question to you because, you know, I think it's safe to say we're all mothers. Kanaya, you're not a mother yet, but you have the drive that I picked up when I became a mother, where does that stem from? What are you, what's fueling you? Your um, mic is off, Un unmute yourself, babe. I would say where I want to be, I mean, that replays in my mind daily. That's all that I see, no matter what I'm doing, I'm dreaming about my future. You know, I'm more than all grateful for where I am, but my future is what keeps me fueled. I know where I want to be in life. So I would like to say I'm not a fearful person, but I wasn't always like that. You know, um, I used to be scared in the beginning, but now I can honestly say nothing, nothing makes me fearful. Honestly, nothing like not a thing. It could be the biggest project ever that I'm doing and I'll just do it because God has shown me everything that was possible. You know, I remember where I came from, where I am now. So there's nothing, there's nothing that can make me scared because I know everything I want is already mine and every, everything is already happening. You know, it's kind of hard to explain, but you know, my friends laugh at me because they're like, I always tell them, don't be fearful. Like, what are you scared for? That's my biggest saying. So when it comes to fearful, that's like my number one limitation that I've already defeated. You know, so I, it's nothing that can be, that can get me scared. But I would say, you know, I understand what it was like to be at that standpoint. But when you go through so much and you see everything you imagine to the T come to life, yeah. why be scared ever again? You right. know, so I would say that was what I would like to add. But my, what fuels me is my goal. Carl, but like, what you said. I'm afraid. <laughs> When she said that, she said, when you see and you know every, because that's the thing, when you can see it, that means you can do it. When you don't see it, get off somebody else's lane and go get on your own lane. But that's, when you see it, that's like, that. I feel like that. I felt that because I see it. I see where I'm going. I know where I'm going. And so everything else is kind of like, you know, it's just pieces. It's like, <laughs> whatever. You know, you see it and you don't, you don't, nothing is an obstacle anymore. It's just kind of like, okay, this is something to do, you know. Um, I feel like fear is doubting God and that, that bothers me. So I can't do that. Right. Wow. Say that, girl. Say that. Yes. <laughs> this baby be talking, honey. I got, I got another, um, I want to get to so a little bit of deeper subject, okay? Because I know everybody has a backstory. Everybody has a hurt. I know there's a hurt that I have that well i've had to to deal with to push me to where i am now okay my hurt and for a long time i would not share my hurt but i think we all have something and i think there's power in sharing it because when you do you actually tell someone who else who, someone else who was in your shoes that they too can overcome and then achieve things right so my hurt was more about me and my education coming up you know, a lot of people um, don't know, uh, that don't know about me in high school, in school, I struggled bad. I know, and, and saying that a lot, a lot, a lot of people um, have had the same experience. Like I was held back, like literally held back twice, two times. And both times it was like being um in slow motion you know what i'm saying it, it it didn't i didn't feel feel the hurt until later 
okay? Um, I just know it happened the first time. I remember crying once and then it happened again. However that happened, all I know is that feeling fuels me today, okay? I ended up graduating from high school um, with a 4.0 GPA, but my counselor, before I did that, um, called me into her office one day and said, you know, you should just go ahead and drop out and get your GED. That was like the, I think that was the gut punch for me. Nobody had ever came to me and said that for whatever reason, I can't even tell you now throughout life why, you know, I have an amazing family, all that. I don't, I can't tell you why, but that happened. That literally happened to me being held back. And that fuels me to this day. Um, with that being said, like I said, I graduated with a 4.0. I went back, the, uh, the counselor called me back down to the office when I graduated. And I remember her asking me, what changed? What, what happened? And I told her, you know, you told me I couldn't do it. You told me that I couldn't do it. I learned that day that that's a part of my fuel. That's who I am, okay? So now everything that I do, everything to, to, from creating products to going to the next level, to creating a movie, to writing albums, to everything that I do at this point in my life is for, from that reason. So I want to know where you guys, what was a turning point for you? And I know everybody has something different. If there's no hurt there, you know, I'm just curious to know if I'm, um, you know, what views you guys. Danielle, let's start with you. So recently, um, Today is November the 4th. Two years ago, I actually put a post up on Facebook like two or three days ago, and it actually went semi-viral. Um, two years ago, around this time, I actually got evicted. <laughs> I got evicted from my apartment. And it wasn't due to me not having, it wasn't due to, well, it was due to financial reasons, but it wasn't because I couldn't pay. It was because at the time, like I was mentally tired. Like I had, like I had an 800 square foot two bedroom apartment. It was me and my son and my nephew. My son went off to college. So I was proud of that. My son went off to Clark Atlanta. Yeah. But even though my son went off to college, I had my nephew, I had family members. I had, I had so many people staying with me. And because I'm like a people pleaser and I, sometimes I just can't say no, like I would come home from work, come home from events. I had to go like straight to my room and like, I was like, oh my gosh. So October the 26th, 2018, like I came home and there was an eviction notice on my door. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> they said you have to be out by October the 31st, 2018. October the 31st, 2018 came and I didn't even care. I contacted family members and told them like, come get this bedroom set, living room set, dining room set. I packed up all of my clothes and shoes and put it in a black trash bag and slept in my car for like two or three days. Not because I didn't have anywhere to go, I just didn't want to bother anyone. So I say all that to say that like, even during that time, I was still like smiling, helping people, going to events, being on the news, going to galas like people weren't paying <laughs> people weren't paying me for stuff I wasn't even asking for money I, they were like send me an invoice I'm like no I'm okay I'm sleeping in my car after that event so I'm my my dressing room was quick trip every I know every <laughs> I, I know every quick trip in St. Louis that was like quick trip is the cleanest bathroom so I'm like, okay, well, I'm a, so anyway, long story short, you never know what someone is going through and I'm not even embarrassed to even say it, talk about it, whatever. And once I made that post, I received so many inboxes, so many women, young ladies, even some men that are like, <laughs> that, that testimony right there was like, just gave me hope gave me where like someone can look at me and be like oh she got it together oh she's the bomb oh she mm -hmm. right. everyone is going through something mm -hmm. even even the richest of the richest are going through something so just you know have faith in God and believe and you know manifest and you know treat people the way that you want to be treated at all times stay humble and genuine and just grind I don't yeah so that's it 
<laughs> Absolutely. I mean, yeah, that that these are the things that a lot of people don't get to express. And I think sometimes the stories like this paralyze people. Mm -hmm. you know? So I'm asking you guys to share these things because that's going to help somebody to unlock that paralysis. Kanaya, you're up next. Okay, um, I was sitting here while you were talking, trying to think of a time period that would, like, I got so many time periods to match this, but I'm gonna pick one of the um, biggest ones for me. It was graduating high school. That was um, probably one of the hardest time periods for me. Um, I had stopped going to school for three months because I hated it. You know, it wasn't the schoolwork. It was. I felt like they didn't, uh, I didn't feel like a kid. You know, I felt like everybody else was living a regular life but me. Because outside of school, I was slaving. I was being an adult, you know, I was at the shop all day. I was using all my money to fund my life. I didn't go home and say, oh, somebody has dinner waiting on me or somebody's about to help me with my homework. You know, that wasn't my concern. But when I'm hearing everybody else's conversations, like, that's what the conversations was like, mom won't let me go here. Like, what? I didn't even have anybody to answer to. So it was just like weird. So I didn't talk to many people in school. I mean, people knew what I was doing. They knew my businesses. They would try to talk to me, but I was just like, very, very antisocial. And I was never in school, ever. I was always at the shop. That was my therapy. When I was doing my clients, I didn't have to think about anything. I felt like this is what's going to get me out of this situation. So looking back on it, you know, I should have told people at school, I just used to break down. I remember being in the principal's office and I like literally cursed her out, like with real curse words. They would think I was a bad kid, but I wasn't. I just had a lot going on. And I told her, to leave me the F alone, she is picking on me. She don't know what I'm doing. And she kept saying, well, until you tell me what you're doing, I'm gonna put you in ISS every day. And that's what she did. I had never been in ISS a day in my life before this happened. And I was going to North Tech for fashion. So I felt like my dream is getting drowned on because I just knew I was gonna be a fashion designer. So I was like, you know what, forget her. I'm never looking back. And she kept saying, we're trying to prepare you to get a job. But in my mind, I kept thinking, I'm not even gonna get a job. That's all I kept thinking. So she literally put on my transcript that I told her that I make more money out of school than in school. I never said that, but she was mad that I cursed her out. So it's still in my transcript today. So every time I read it, I start laughing because they literally asked me to do um, a conference for my old class and the, uh, no, the new class that came and to tell them my success story. So it's crazy because all I think about is that day that I literally cursed that lady out and told her to leave me there. <laughs> but <laughs> that to say, I had to struggle when I dropped out, I would say for those three months, I didn't have anybody that told me to go back. I didn't have anybody that said, you need to get up and go to school. What you doing? That's not an option enough. No, it was like, okay, you don't go. You don't go. All right. So, you know, I just did. I just was at the shop all day, just doing what I do, building my clientele. And then I was at one of my suites and one of the older ladies I was running from one day, she at, finally asked me how old I was. She thought I was an adult the whole time. And, you know, she just was like, you don't go to school? I'm like, no. She was so mad. I still talked to her to this day. It's crazy. She was like, she was like, what do you mean you don't go to school? I'm like, I don't want to go. Like, I don't like it there. That's what I told her. And she was like, what do you mean? Do you know how smart you are? Because she was looking at all my branding and my marketing and events I was doing. And she told me, you can't come back to work. And it was, I was renting a suite from her. She told me I couldn't come, continue to rent the suite if I didn't get back in school. And I remember running with Tendai one day, and Tendai told me, you would be good at Howard. And all I could kept thinking about was, I wanted to go to college. But I was like, nobody's saving up for college for me, you know. And when I went to NYU's meeting that they had in St. Louis, I was the only Black person, and I was the only child that didn't have a parent. After that, I never looked back into going into college. But I didn't tell Tendai that when she shared her story with me about how I would be good at Howard. It just made me quiet, like, wow, I didn't even get to go, and I really wanted to. But it was all for a reason, you know. I knew I had it more, more to do with my community, and I knew that I had a bigger vision within what I was planning, what I've been working for my whole life, yeah. you know. So I started just to say, you know, I always say school doesn't define you. School education is very important, but that just wasn't my path, you know. I can always go back or anything. 
But, you know, it was a blessing to be able to finish high school. I literally had to meet with the superintendent after she told me I need to get back in school. And I showed him everything. I showed him my clients. I showed him my bookings. I showed him all the events I was doing. And he was like, this is your life. You're more busier than me. And I'm like, well, yeah. And I can literally go to that same superintendent office today and they're going to be like, you did everything you said you were going to do. I told him in that office, I said, I'm going to open me up a salon and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to do that. And he was like, I feel like you're going to do it. So I'm going to let you, I'm going to grant you permission to finish your senior year online. And I graduated early before everyone else. And it was crazy when they contacted me in North Tech and he said, I want you to come and speak to the class students, the fashion department that you were in and tell them your success story and how you literally didn't drop out of school and not go back or you didn't drop out and turn negative and start doing crazy things. You dropped out and literally did more than we, we were even expecting anybody to do in right. a less than a year's time. So I talked to the students and they were so inspired. And a lot of people from North Tech still reach out to me today and ask me advice on fashion and things. But that is absolutely a blessing. And that's what definitely keeps me going because I feel like so many people from my past are watching me and waiting on me to be successful. So, you know what's funny? Me. What's but. funny is that, uh, <laughs> so you mentioned Howard. I didn't go to Howard either. But the thing is, is that Howard had me come and speak to their people, which I thought was hilarious. And when I said that, you remind me of somebody that I've seen there. You got that type of drive. So, you, yeah, you're right. You don't have to go to college to get that drive. Some people just born with it. And that's just what it is, you know? So, yeah, you'll be walking across the stage getting an honor, honorary degree without even having to go. <laughs> <laughs> this is to go to NYU and get an honorary. Because when yeah. I say that was my dream college growing up, I just knew I was going there. I was like, well, yeah. NYU, I was going there. When I went to that meeting, I was so discouraged. I never want to feel like that again. I never want anybody to feel discouraged because of their environment. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have the mental push at the time to keep going for it. But it was for a reason. Everything happens for a reason and it was not meant for me to take that path. Yeah. So I'm honestly very, very blessed to be in the position that I am now and I'm going to keep pushing even further and I'm going to make sure that I knock my bucket list and being honored by NYU because that's one of my biggest goals. There you go. See, you, you, you'll still get it one way or another. Michelle, let's, let's hear yours. I know that was a lot. <laughs> but we, did y'all, this stuff is good. It's good for people to hear this. Yeah, that was amazing, actually. Um, so uh, for me, uh, my heart, well, um, <laughs> man, I could write 10 books, but I'll, <laughs> I'll make it quick. <laughs> I, um, I was a teen mom. Um, I had two children by the time I was 19. And um, someone in my family made a comment to me that all I was gonna do was have babies, be on welfare, not graduate school and be a statistic. Hmm. Someone in my family said that to me. And honestly, that was the path I was on. Um, there were things that happened to me that led me to that path, but that, that was the path I was on. And I remember praying and asking God to not let me be a statistic to help me, to guide me because I didn't feel like I had any guidance, uh, coming up. And so he did lay a path. Like Kanisha said, he laid a path for me. I don't know how I did what I did. I don't know how I raised those babies like I did. I don't know how I am where I am today if it wasn't for God and him laying out a path for me. So I, I went to medical school. I got a job at Grace Hill. That was my first job, <laughs> uh, healthcare industry. Um, I got promoted to Washington University. I met physicians along the way that they guided me and they laid a path for me. I went to school for free for from WashU. I got my degrees. Then I transitioned to Fontbonne. I got, you know, multiple degrees, went into education. And I, all, through all of that, I kept asking God to continue to put me on a path so that I wouldn't be a statistic. So I wouldn't be a failure or I wouldn't be on welfare. And I always strive to be the best mom that I could be and to provide my kids the guidance that I did not feel like I got so that they would not fall into the same pattern that, that I was in. And so 
um, words are very powerful. You never know what, when you say something to someone, how it impacts them and how it affects their entire life. And right. so when someone said that to me, my goal was I'm going to inspire everyone that I come uh, in contact with. In the healthcare industry, through all the training that I did, I felt like I was drawing people to me and telling them a little bit about my story and inspiring them to do the best that they could. And then in education, oh, I was front and center, you know, working with people who came from the same background as me, you know, working in proprietary education and trade schools where people didn't come from money or they didn't come from anything and they were this was their last chance to really make something of themselves, drawing those girls in and saying, hey, just because you're a young mom, just because you're in this position that you're in, just because you're you know, feeling this way doesn't mean you can't make it. And just using my message, my mess became my message, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and just, I've always had a passion for inspiring women, just talking them through whatever circumstance and giving them a word of positivity because I know how that negative um, message impacts your life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you guys, thank you for that. That, that, I promise you, that session, that little segment right there is definitely going to feed somebody, going to water somebody's. Yeah. It really is. Um, because, you know, I, 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 I can speak for myself and you, you know, when you talk to other people, you start to learn that, hey, I'm, I'm actually doing better than I thought, you know, I'm doing a little bit better than I, I thought I would be. So, you know, thanks for sharing your stories and for inspiration as well. Um, I, this next question is just really an overview of everybody. You guys are phenomenal um, as this show, as the title, I sat and I thought really hard as I was creating a flyer and I was like, what is this show going to be about? And I kept looking at you all's pictures and I was like, inspiration, they inspire that, you know, you, she inspires, you guys inspire. And I want to say this, you know, because we, we know, we like to say black girl magic. We, we say all of that, but you never know who's watching and you never know what kind of skin they're wrapped in, who you're going to talk to, who your audience is going to be inspire, regardless of who you are, where you are always walking at. You just never know who's going to be watching, who needs it, you know, because right now we all do on this planet. We do. You know, so that's very, very important. Um, I want to say, ask you guys a question. Um, first of all, what's next for you? And also, how can people reach out to you and uh, get, or take advantage of your services? Um, we'll start with Michelle this time because I had, I think I've been going backwards a lot. So we'll start with Michelle. Um, so I'm what I'm working on now. Um, continuing to provide healthy nail polish products. I actually just rolled out my new um, fall and winter collection and the theme is sign of the times. This collection is a, uh, a labor of love and I'm using the collection to inspire change. Um, the nail polish colors are named for um, spreading love, spreading a message of inspiration and love. And so I want you guys to definitely check that out. Um, you can follow me on all social media outlets at Demi Blue NN. Um, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, um, Pinterest. And then uh, also you can go to my website, Demi Blue Natural Nails.com. Check out the new fall winter collection. It is um, Colors to Inspire is the theme, um, Signs of the Time. And it's definitely speaking to where we are. Uh, in the environment that we're in, trying to spread a message of love and togetherness and inspiration. So definitely check it out. Love it, love it, love it. There's hope. Yeah. There is hope. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, Estesia, what is next for you? And uh, where can people, how can people utilize your services? You're muted. <laughs> Let's unmute you. <laughs> so what's next for me I'm working on a novel that I want to get published through a major publishing company and hopefully one day maybe it'll become a movie I would love to get into writing scripts for plays or movies so screenwriting and yeah. my 1000 women's project so I'm on a am I freezing up again I'm on a journey to interviewing 
1,000 women. So I've started that today. So I'll be interviewing a thousand career women to give back, to empower women and girls to share their stories. You, like you say, you never know what people go through. I have a story, but I will not ever be defined by my story. Um, so then there's that. And they can follow me at Steve Stone on Instagram, on Facebook, and East Stones LLC if they want to, if they're interested in writing a book. Awesome. So C Stone, S T E E S T O N. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Uh, Elizabeth Danielle. What's Elizabeth, Elizabeth Danielle. Um, all things, again, PR and marketing. I will say that over the past four years, I have had over 200 clients, and I currently hold 20 clients on retainer private and public. At this time, I am currently not accepting, <laughs> not accepting any new clients until January, 2021. And I just wanted to mention a few of my current clients. Um, Major is actually one of my clients. Um, she's part of Bold Moves and she has quite a few different uh, media outlets that are reaching out to her and she is open for booking and speaking engagements and more. Also House of Soul, which is um, at the corner of Washington and Tucker, 1204 Washington. It, House of Soul is all things art, soul and music and culture. And it's also a beautiful event space. Pure Heat Gourmet Sauce, look them up, STL Pure Heat Gourmet Sauce and then Papa Parade. Garment popcorn in Ferguson. Yes, the popcorn is amazing. Vanessa Townsend, Karan Bowden. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. <laughs> you can find my email address and phone number all in those public places. Again, Elizabeth, Danielle, all things PR and marketing. And then I have a bit like, honestly, and I want to put this out there that I have a team. I have a team of, you know, branding strategists, marketing strategists, graphic designers, videographers, photographers. So I'm not going to take all the credit for what I'm doing in my brand. So I have a lot of um, people working with me and behind the scenes. Awesome. So yeah. thank you very much. Ms. Kanaya, Major Slusher. What's up? Next? Yes. So what's up? So um, I would like to say I'm working on a lot right now. I feel like I'm wrecking my brain, but my main priority is, um, you know, of course, my salon right now because I just opened that. So that's like my baby right now. And my girls uh, that work there, even though they're older than me, they're like my babies, too, because it's my responsibility to make sure they're thriving and getting the income that they need. Um, but more than all my team right now is everything to me. So we have a lot of projects on the table. Um, and yeah, so that's mostly me for the future. But I just want to say that it was an honor to be able to speak today. This really meant a lot. And just hearing you guys stories just make me feel like, whoo, okay, I'm not the only one. So um, yeah, that just, that's amazing to me. But yeah, I would just say for the future, my goal is global. You know, I never want to, I love my city. And I'm not one of those people that say, St. Louis ain't for me. That's not what I say. But I just say, you know, as far as my vision, I know it needs to reach more than just women and girls where I am. It needs to reach women globally, girls globally. And so the next generation to come, they're not able to say, when I was your age, I wasn't thinking of that. So, you know, that's my goal. I love that. I think that is amazing. The fact that you have representation of that, you know, so close in age. Okay, I can actually reach that. So that's, that is boss. That's very boss. Um, I just speak for myself. What's next for me? I mean, I'm very, very honored and thankful, thankful for every bottle of product bought, every, yes. every share, every anything, you know, I really am. Um, for me, what's next is, is, um, my actual whisper line is going to be launched in January. Um, also, I am writing a book. Stisha has been helping me with that. 
Um, so I'm excited about that, but I'm also working on a movie for the, for the big screen. So we'll see um, where all this leads. I'm excited. I um, <laughs> It's a lot, it's a lot, but it's doable. It's very, very doable. So, you know, I, do it afraid. That's all I have to say is do it afraid and uh, Healthy Hair Solutions, you know, Elizabeth Danielle, the brand, Steve Stone, Demi Blue, Major Slusher, Veramel, Global. That's where we're going. That's where we're going. And I'm so proud of you guys and excited. And I'm very honored and thankful that you took the time to come on to this platform, Texture Talk. And uh, after COVID, you know, maybe we can all be great in, in, in the same room or something. Because <laughs> right now, COVID, they, they like, sit down, all y'all. <laughs> so right. that's what's going on. You know what, Kanaya, you look like you're getting ready to do a cooking show right now. It's like super cute though. Like you Thank you, to... that's, that's so funny. I wore this to the event earlier with Elizabeth and I went clean to the shop afterwards, did my clients and rushed here to do this call. So I still had on like my my outfit and yeah, it did. my kitchen not dirty because I don't get to cook, so yeah. <laughs> No, I'm just saying that because I'm like, dang, I, I can see it watching you on TV. There's this chick. It's not, I'm, I'm going off something, but there's this girl. And I know I sent you, I sent you a, a, a snap, like you remind me of this girl, but or she reminds me of Oh you. my gosh, Scott Jackson. Why does everybody yeah. send me that? Oh my goodness. It's I've been so watching funny her. you send me that. Yeah, I've been watching her on uh, Dancing with the Stars. And every time I see her, I'm like, that girl reminds me of Kanaya a whole lot. <laughs> but yeah, of course, you, you Boston. Boston that up anyways but yeah it's, just, it's, a <laughs> it's a compliment guys I do want to say thank you that is the end of our show we have been here for a whole hour normally we do 30 wow. minutes. Those long applause. <laughs> thank you for having us thank you, no, thank you. yes thank you I'm definitely honored yes an audience if you guys are in need of any service you just need a word of advice reach out just inbox somebody. One, somebody will definitely reach out. If you would like to be on Texture Talk, please let me know. You know somebody that needs to be on Texture Talk, let me know. Inbox me. We'll be more than happy to share our platform with you too. I yeah. forgot to say my social media is yeah. at Major yeah. Slusher on Instagram and no, it's no, at on Facebook. That. Say that again because they, they didn't hear you. I was talking and go ahead. Say it again. Oh, okay. It, it didn't show me you was talking. Okay, so Instagram is Major Slusher and Facebook is Kanaya Slusher. I'm sorry. I forgot that was the second question. <laughs> that was. That was a, everybody got their stuff out there? Contact these ladies. Contact, get the nail polish, get your book written if you want a book written, get some marketing and PR if that's what you need to do. Get, I need to get my lashes and brows done too. So All right. I, I've said this so, so many times and so now I got to make it happen. So yes, I'm, I'm, I'm going to come so you can get my face and my eyes right. Just book it on the website, just book it. I will, I'll do that. I'll make sure to do that. Meanwhile, you guys have an amazing night and uh, remember you. my natural is my natural on a count of three. One, two, three. My, my, my natural, natural. natural. All day and every day. <laughs> Take care, guys. Yes, thank you.